Okay, so we're here again. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Crypto Talks podcast. Uh, hi, Joseph. Hello. Hi, Annie. So I have a very interesting guest today. I'm talking to Joseph Mark, who is the CEO and co-founder of Publica. And it's a very interesting project in many different aspects, but we'll dive into it a bit later. We'll speak about Joseph himself first. So tell me your story. Uh, how did you get into crypto? Well, into crypto, uh, because I'm a digital media technologist and and uh, and I became a blockchain nerd when uh, when I read uh, Satoshi's white paper. And at the time, I was working in digital media and television and film, and uh, and co-founding companies that made products uh, for the production of those. And and I realized that blockchain and particularly the the digital trust factor uh, that it was going to be really important in media of all kinds. So. Uh, I put on my thinking cap and thought, well, television and film, it's going to take a little while. Um, plus, you know, we're working on their problems, you know, in many different ways. But I started in books, actually. Um, I was a musician first, but I always hung around with authors. And then I started working on books and writing chapters in books and eventually wrote a book. And I just love books. And I thought through how blockchains and and digital trust and crypto uh, would find its way into useful applications in the world and i realized that books not only is it something i understand but books are an interesting place for consumer and business to intersect and the legal situation around books is crystal clear the burn convention of 1886 is still agreed today and and uh, put into most trade treaties. And it's really clear, everyone knows what a book is. It's not confusing around the world. And blockchains, of course, are global. And so I got the idea, you know, books without borders. And we'll see where that goes. Yeah, I mean, sounds amazing. I'm I'm commuting to work every day, and uh, and my my way takes about forty minutes, forty forty five minutes. Uh, books are saving my whole journey, and <laughs> it's 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 really I, I found it's it's the most efficient way of having the time fly faster. Uh, you know, uh, doing something useful apart from watching around, and uh, yeah, it's amazing. Books save my whole commute. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to hear that because um, books are also, in our first white paper I wrote, books are how humanity helps itself. And that's kind of a large overarching statement. But, you know, go all the way back to Gutenberg's press and how it brought literacy to the world. But today in the Internet area, the Internet era, we have lots of information. And, you know, getting information is not hard. Um, Curating information is a little more difficult. Navigating information is a little more difficult. Um, I know that you write on Steemit, for example, yeah. and um, and I blog on Medium. Uh, I think they're all great, um, but books are special because of all the different ways that you can learn from another person. Oh, you wrote yourself. Uh, books are an important calling card, yeah. something like that, right? Uh, yeah. Business card, yeah. Business card, okay. Well, um, I truly believe that, and, and uh, but books are special in all media because what they mean is someone put a lot of thought and time into this and then they went the end period yeah. <laughs> this is done right this is a thing right and and that not only affects you as a reader but it affects the writer as well yeah yeah that's true i mm-hmm. mean it's uh i i always say uh you know people we have different kind of success as authors. So, you know, some, some people calculate success in terms of how many copies you've sold. Some other authors calculate the success in terms of what the book brought to the reader, what it changed in their lives, what they it made them feel. Um, you know, there are many different parameters to, to this auto thing. I personally really enjoy the process. So even if, you know, I end up with being my only reader when I'm self 
um, editing the book. I will still, you know, uh, think that I didn't uh, really lose any time because I, I truly enjoyed the process. It's very nice self-reflection tool as well. And um, yeah, I mean, in general, books are amazing. And uh, recently I discovered that the blockchain technology is amazing as well. So you, <laughs> you seem to have married the both together. Um, I was looking at um, Publica and the, the whole concept behind it. I was trying to understand how to explain it in the most simple <laughs> way. So I had a feeling that it's something between Amazon Kindle publishing on blockchain it's something between um, content creation and and tokenizing your books. Uh, so um, I guess you can explain it way, way better than I can. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it better, but I have to do it often. And what I've learned is that, like an elephant, it depends on which corner you're touching. Uh -huh. So um, if, if you are familiar with Kindle, uh, then of course you're going to see similarities. Um, but bear in mind that 96% of the people alive today have never logged into Amazon for anything, let alone books. So, you know, Kindle is not everywhere. Mm -hmm. Not everyone knows what it is. Um, and But if you're an author, um, it's going to look a little bit like uh, Kickstarter, mm -hmm. and it's going to look a little bit like Kindle, because we have uh, something called a book ICO, and then we have a catalog. And so... You're going to see the catalog is resembling Kindle. You're going to see the book ICO resembling Kickstarter. Um, of course, it's not the same as any of those. Otherwise, why bother? Um, but um, what it is, we're trying to make it simple by you know connecting to something that you already know. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, part of your audience knows what crypto is, yes. right? It's right there in the title of your podcast. Well, from that corner. It's, you know what an ICO is, and you know how important the transparency and trust and community matter to an ICO. Absolutely. Well, say the same things for a book ICO. Why not have book launches be ICOs? Okay. Where the transparency and the trust and the community matters. And, and ICOs are unfamiliar to people who know about Kindle because there's no concept of that. Yeah you know, in a Kindle. Um, but it's a, a lot more like a book club or an author's fan base. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and every author today should have a platform of your own. Yeah. Please do not give your platform to Amazon. That's a bad idea. <laughs> it's yours. Keep it. <laughs> so uh, in the process of a book ICO, um, you've got the same concepts, the soft cap, the hard cap, limited number of tokens or infinite number of tokens. Um, tokenization in general, exchanges of tokens, all those same things that are fun in crypto world. We brought that same level of fun to books. Okay, well, sounds amazing. Uh, now, when you were explaining it, I also uh, recalled one thing related to fan base, which also may be similar a little bit and, and bring in the, the concept in um, the platform called Patreon, where mm -hmm. fa your fan base actually... Um, you know, helps you fund your activities so you don't have to go back ideally to a full-time job and you can do whatever you love doing full-time and providing it to your fans. And, you know, um, and many writers are on Patreon as well. Um, so so, so let's, let's probably look at it from, from different aspects in order to understand it better. So let's say, um, I, I'm, I'm sure uh, there are many aspiring authors who uh, writers who want to become authors who have written something and uh, unfortunately that something hasn't been out there yet so they don't even know how to start and they haven't wrapped their mind about things traditional publishing is not a route for a first-time writer unfortunately not always um, so let's say they they come across publica and they would like to experiment with it um, where do they start? Well, what happens? What do I need to do? <laughs> well, you go to publica.com and you register. And uh, by the time this your podcast is out, uh, I believe we'll have up the what we call the author's dashboard. Mm -hmm. and, and that's for you know self-service and the privacy of your laptop. You can uh, check it out and 
and uh, define your smart contract. Um, so if an author doesn't know anything about crypto, um, you could wait a while because uh, we'll make the platform look more and more user-friendly. Um, well, I wouldn't, I'm not going to say user-friendly because uh, it is user-friendly if you accept the fact that crypto is a thing. Okay. Right? And, and I believe crypto is a thing. I mean, a little bit of time and you'll find out, yeah, crypto is definitely a thing. Yeah. Right? It's part of our life. It's not going away. And, and it brings lots of good things. Just it's not always uh, visible, mm -hmm. right, um, to uh, to the layperson. But that doesn't mean it's not there. It doesn't mean that it isn't doing great things for you. Yeah. So we make the author's dashboard very user friendly, and we expose the concept of the blockchain smart contract, which is not available from any other way of publishing your book. It's just not an option. Yeah. And so it's a, it's worth learning because blockchains are global. They run on their own. Mm -hmm. They're you know completely autonomous and decentralized. And the smart contract that you put on the blockchain for your book, you should think of it like your storefront on the highway, mm -hmm. on the world's internet highway. And of course, we give you a web page for the you know for the web browser people. Mm -hmm. But that contract is your business model, and that's why we call it publish your way. Mm -hmm. So here's where you make a big difference between Publica and Kindle. Okay. And Kindle, right? And Kindle, you pretty much do it their way, right? Their way or the highway. It's either <laughs> their way or no way if you want to be there. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So we say publish your way. Yeah. And, and, uh, and we just do the, the technical parts, you know, the, the, um, uh, all the parts that an author doesn't need to know about. But it's your business model that you program onto the blockchain. Okay. Your prices, um, your uh, token count, your dates for your book ICO, uh, your soft cap, your hard cap, that's all up to you. And we think that's important. And it's, I think it's well understood in the crypto world that that kind of, you know, I don't really need a central authority telling me how to do my business. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And I'd like to experiment myself, and I know my own audience, and uh, all those things that we said, the transparency, the trust, the community, that's what we're trying to bring to the author so that they can really embrace that and make it part of their lives. Okay, well, it, it's very interesting because, uh, I mean, we, we know that the the biggest advantages of blockchain is the, you know, keeping the control of your data, keeping the control of your stuff and, and the security aspect of things. So here, I mean, when, when I published my books on Amazon and once they got a certain visibility, uh, I could discover my books being sold on, on many different other websites. And, um, you know, uh, Partly it was good because it was increasing the visibility and I was a sure. new, new author. So I, I personally didn't really mind that so much. But on the other hand, um, you know. It felt creepy though, right? It felt creepy. <laughs> it, it, I mean, I had a mixed feeling discovering those things. I didn't you know, know how exactly to react to this. So, um, so that aspect is very important. And um, as you said, Amazon or any other publishing platform um, let alone the traditional publishing group actually dictates um, mm. all the rules that you have to follow, um, which not always are um, are the right ones. Plus, you basically mm. you depend on the platform. So if something happens to Amazon or if something happens to your account on Amazon, yeah. you uh, you know you can't do much. So um, so here I, I think you know being. Um, light control freak i think that aspect is very important for me and and, and good that's... good well you, you should take charge of your own life and and your own rights and your own uh, assets and property and now look at it again from the reader's point of view because public also doesn't require a subscription we don't need to know where you live we don't need to know anything about you we don't need your password you have your own wallet and that's where your book token goes it goes to your wallet and it's a you know, an ERC-20 uh, standard token on the Ethereum blockchain, for those of you who are familiar with that. Yeah. Um, it trades the way ERC-20 trades. And and uh, it's yours. Right? You bought it. You paid for it. So as a reader, when you click that Buy Now button on Amazon, did 
Did you read all the fine print that came right behind it? Of course not. If you did, here's what it says. All the way at the bottom, it says that you, the reader, have just given away all of your rights. Now, do readers have rights? Yes, they do. In copyright law, everywhere, readers have rights, called fair use and, and other names. But it means if you bought it, you bought it. Of course, uh, there's many stories. I'm not going to tell them all. You can Google it. But many times, readers who bought something, something went wrong between them and Amazon. And what they bought disappeared yeah. with no recourse. Uh, so that you asked about me before. And of, of course, we're an author-centric money model. Um, we're doing this for the authors like you. But the emotional impact for me came from when I thought about myself as a reader. And... When you buy book tokens in the public away, they're, they're in your wallet. It doesn't matter what kind of phone you have or where you subscribe to or if you like Apple this week or you don't. It doesn't matter. It's in your wallet. Mm -hmm. So it's yours on any device where you have your, your uh, uh, typical crypto uh, security. Okay, so, and, you know, uh, um, sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt, but mm -hmm. I'm, I just wanted to understand that that part of the story. So, mm -hmm. as a reader, you you get the book token, you you buy the book. What happens? Like, what is the format? That, are you getting the file, or you know, what what happens in terms of how <laughs> yeah. do you read it? <laughs> right. Well, when you buy a book token, you buy a book token. It goes in your wallet, right? That happens right away. You yeah. own it. It's, your, it's yours. Now, when you want to go and read the book then of course the blockchains are open source and you can find our tokens there and all that mm -hmm. but you want to read the contents of the book well where is that mm -hmm. um we don't put the book cover and all the book contents uh on the blockchain that would um, literally price the books out of existence mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't make sense um although we do we will offer to authors if they want the content also mm -hmm. on a decentralized storage like storage or IPFS or something, right? Um, you know, bearing in mind that's not free, but if that's what they want, that's great. Mm -hmm. but, you, but in terms of what happened to you, where you published a book, you followed the rules, and then suddenly the book is everywhere else. Well, that's not going to happen with us because we're not delivering a PDF. We're not, you know, dumping a PDF or an EPUB on your phone. That book token is part of cryptography's uh, private key, public key um, mm -hmm. uh, algorithm, yeah. and it confirms access to the book. Um, technically, where we put that data doesn't actually matter. Mm -hmm. right? We'll put it somewhere, but who cares where? You know, it's incredibly secure. It's you know, it's behind the same sign of kind of security that is as strong as any ICO's security would be. Okay. It's heavily secured. And we can do that because we've got the public key, private key access. So you the access the book things. with your token, with your book That's token. Right. Okay. Yeah. So which means that if I'm an author and I have three books, for example, I'm going to have three different book tokens for each right. individual book. That's right. Okay. And, and that's pretty important in for those authors you mentioned before. Um, you know, you do it, you write because you like it, you like the process. Mm -hmm. And I think that most writers do because if you don't, you wouldn't do it very long. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but when there is a transaction involved, um, you probably want to keep some kind of records or some discoverability or you know, where's my book going? How's it doing? Right. Yeah. So um, we put the title of your book right in the book token, in the string. So if you've ever, you know, looked at a blockchain with my ether wallet or something, right, you see that long gobbledygook. Well, in your case, your book's title is going to be in there. Okay. Right? Why not? Yeah, right. I see. Wow, amazing. So, I mean, discoverability, you mentioned something that is very important, mm -hmm. especially for people who are starting over and don't have built up audience just yet. Uh, um, very often, um, the platform and how I mean I, I think the power of Amazon for for new writers specifically is the fact that you can come out very fresh with your very first book place it as a free one and and gain a certain at least a minimum level of discoverability and have some people that is the minimum level it's it. absolutely so, the minimum level I call Amazon the mass grave yeah. of books 
Yeah. Um, but Ryan Holiday wrote a book called Perennial Seller. Yes. And it's a great study on exactly what you're talking about is what if you're not Ryan Holiday yet, um, but you admire him and you want to you want to reach a lot of people um, or like you listen to Seth Godin and you want to make an impact somewhere. Yeah. Well, make that impact, but don't donate your impact to Amazon. Yeah. And so I agree with Ryan. Um, sure, sell your book on Amazon. Who cares, right? But keep the, the, the people that you're bringing to you, to yourself, to your platform, your community, they're yours. So as you build your community, have your own website. You know, sell your book there. Mm. Now, many authors have come up against the problem of, yeah, but how do I do that? You know, if they send me a PayPal, then I have to print a paper one and ship it or... Or I give them a download, but if it's a PDF, they'll just, you know. That's why the public idea is put the public a button on your website <laughs> and they'll buy it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So so, so basically, um, you know, building the audience and, and getting discovered is still mm -hmm. the author's job. Like you don't have well, that platform visibility yeah. that you offer. You you offer well, the tools, the the ability to to create your own smart contracts to issue the book token. And you mentioned the ICOs. Usually ICOs are done for projects who want to build the project or to create the thing and make it a reality. Which is a book, right? Which is the book. But in your a book case, is a project too. Yeah. So so so. <laughs> You can do you can do it as a one time thing as an ICO to cover your book costs of That's a good produ producing That's good. the book, or you can have it ongoing to cover what I don't know your your costs of not going to work like Patreon does uh, and having an ongoing ICO for each month or. Um, what are the the options and what are the models of right. uh, the well so draw a distinction between the book ico and the catalog of course when it goes in the catalog it's in the catalog right people will find it and they'll buy it because they find it in the catalog that's normal um but if your audience is remotely related to crypto and if you're watching this you probably might be thinking along those lines um please bear in mind that your audience can buy your book with crypto on public eye Okay. And that right, so that's an audience you you don't have anywhere else. But in terms of flat out discovery, during the book ICO process, anyone who wants to participate in your book ICO, well, they're going to sign up somehow with an email address or something like that. Yeah. Well, that's not our customer; that's your customer. Mm -hmm. So we send you those people, mm -hmm. right? So so you by doing a book ICO, you're increasing your discovery just by doing it. Okay. And then, of course, then you can get to go on Bitcoin Talk and Reddit subreddits and and uh, on your podcast and your blog and comment, hey, I'm doing a book ICO. Yeah. So that's how you build an audience. You don't build it by throwing your precious work into the mass sea of everybody else's precious work. Yeah. That doesn't work. It yeah. really does. And but. What does work is take this lesson from Seth Godin. He says, go to 10 people. If it's good work, they'll tell 10 more. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then there's uh, Kevin Kelly in the early days of the uh, internet pointed out 1,000 true fans. Yes. And you might think, well, 1,000, that's not a very impressive number. Oh, it's an incredibly impressive number. If they're true fans... Oh yeah, you can make a really good loving. Excuse me, a really good living with a thousand true fans, because those are the people who are going to tell everybody else yeah. that, that your book is great, right? Um, I, I see that you uh, serialized uh, your own novel on Steemit. For uh, well, I was experimenting with it. Uh, I, I'm not very disciplined to do it <laughs> regularly. I, I, I. I I interviewed an author um, who who did that on Steemit, and it was it wasn't a published book. He actually did the first releases and serialized on Steemit, and I think he made about three hundred thousand dollar worth of Steam uh, dollars in um, within six months or so. So um, so it that model 
work quite well <laughs> and I, I was well, just very undisciplined yeah, so, to do that yeah well, well steam it isn't public uh, right they're they're different um you know steam it is what i would call medium form and short form yeah. um, but it is a community builder um, and it's nice of them to monetize it and we're sort of thinking in the same way and we have a lot in common with that except that we're books right and you don't um, the content that you put on steam it is read in a web browser ours is read in an e-reader and so books are interesting an e-reader experience is different than a web browser and personally i love the e-reader experience so will um, it be any e-reader no, no, it's the public e-reader because it has to authenticate that you okay. have paid for that book. Uh, but it's you know it's on the App Store and the the okay. Android Store. I mean, it's free. It's just it's just another. If you have any e-reader, just go get this one. Yeah, right. I see. It works. Right? It works exactly the same, except um, you know it's got the it'll read the text to you if you like to listen. You know all the normal stuff. But uh, it also has a, a wallet in it. So if you're interested in crypto and you're like us and you're just want to see where this goes. Well, why don't you go get the Publica app, mm -hmm. buy a book, and you will have your first digital wallet. And you'll learn all about how digital wallets work from an e-reader app, where nothing bad can happen. Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, makes sense. You bought a book. Okay. You have a wallet. Okay. So for, for all these people who listen, uh, I guess most of them already have crypto. So you get the book token by paying it with Ethereum, I pr presume? Um, well. Or real money, like how, how do you get the token? <laughs> right, I think Ethereum is real money, by the way. Um, yeah. I haven't been paid in any national currencies in well over a year and a half, and I'm, I'm doing fine. Um, at Publica, we uh, made a, to a token called the Pebble. P the ticker is PBL. Mm -hmm. And we did that because it just works as a currency. That's that's all it does. But we wanted to have a currency that was part of the token economy, but didn't just fluctuate by the other tokens, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Right. It sh it should be more tied to the business of publishing and to that author's own business. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so if an author receives pebbles, and they will. Um, See, this, this is what one of the great things about smart contracts and crypto in general is they apply differently to different businesses and activities. Mm -hmm. So in a book, simplest possible model, one author, many readers. Well, they buy when they buy. Mm -hmm. The pebbles, they buy pebbles with Ether or Bitcoin or whatever their exchange or, or other tokens, you know, just go to KuCoin and buy pebbles, right? Yeah. And they send their pebbles to the author's wallet. Mm -hmm. Now they're not sending them to Publica. This is decentralized, right? This is direct selling. Yeah. Reader sends money to author. Mm -hmm. That's another great thing for the author. You're actually selling your own book yourself. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and so the uh, uh, so the pebbles go into the author's wallet. Now the author's not going to cash out their pebbles every time someone buys a book. That, that's you. Makes no you're not going to sit around, right? <laughs> you're, you're gonna, they're going to accumulate, and and then uh, you're going to look at you know crypto prices, and and one day you're going to say, well, you know, I don't have any Bitcoin. I sure wish I did. Oh, but you know what? I have Pebbles. Yeah. And then you're in the game, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think um, uh, most of the listeners who listen to the Crypto Talk podcast up to now. Almost every single guest I had up to now have told that the easiest way and fastest way to learn about crypto is by owning one yourself. So, yeah. uh, so I guess that's the you know the steam it as you said it's good for gaining audience, but at the same time it's very good because for many people who wrote on steam it that was their very first crypto, which sort of led them to the journey of discovering 
blockchain, discovering crypto in general, getting into it, trying new things, and then learning more and more. So, uh, so with with your token, that could be the very first token for writers and for uh, readers. And that I recommend could, it. Yeah, and that mm. could lead people through the journey of actually, you know, the easiest and fastest way to to actually um, get crypto and then go through the journey. Because for many yeah. people, it's not a straightforward p process. No, and, and I think, um, well, Joel and Travis on Bad Crypto pointed out many times, you know, they're not financial advisors and, you know, don't invest money you don't have. Like, yeah. Well, if you, if you read books, you know, you go to the subway, you read books on the, on the way to work, go buy a book. It's something you understand. Um, if you're an author, you write books. Well, publish your book on Publica. It's something you understand. And it'll make it very real and tangible for you. And you'll see that it's really not all that dangerous. It's low risk, got nothing to do with your retirement plans. It's just make it part of your life. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I really like the idea that you can come up with your own smart contracts because it feels like you can experiment with different business models and come up with different strategies for each of your books and see which one works better. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, you know, book series, right? Trilogies and so on and yeah. and um, addendums to a book uh, and the backlog, right? And it's all those things that authors imagine just imagine now that you put it in a smart contract on the blockchain, it runs on its own, the money goes straight to your wallet. Enjoy. And it's there. It's not going to be lost because it's on blockchain. That's right. And and this isn't science fiction here. Um, that's funny, right? It's <laughs> science fiction. <laughs> uh, this is this is real. The public app is on the store, the you know, publica.com, the web page is up, the catalog is up, the first book ICO has already been run. Um, and uh, we're announcing uh, soon, perhaps by the time you publish this, a partnership with a major American publisher where they're going to bring their catalog of books that they've put together over years, wow. really good stuff, on Publica okay. because they've mastered the business of paper books. Mm -hmm. Whole different situation. Salespeople that go to bookstores, yeah. you know, shipping, printing, trucks, inventory control, right? It's a whole nother thing. And uh, so we're doing this partnership because, of course, maybe you want the ebook and maybe you want the paper book and maybe you want one of each. And yeah, so let's just work together. Yeah, I mean, I, I love paperbacks. I have to admit that. Mm -hmm. But uh, where I live right now, it's my 20 plus apartment. So accumulating paper books in in case that I read about, on average, two books a week, it's just mm -hmm. not realistic. It just can't happen. No, and, and everybody's different. Um, I travel a lot. Um, I have three residences on, in three different countries. Any book I want to read, if it's paper, there's a t two out of three chance that it's not here. It's in one of the other places, right? Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean I don't buy paper books. Of course I do. But back to that transparency, trust, and community with the author is I want to have a relationship with the author. And sometimes I've done that. I just write to the author and say, I'm in a different country. Can you ship me a book, right? Because yeah. whatever, you know, paper delivery system you signed up with doesn't ship to where I am, right? Yeah. So these are the kind, this is the kind of community and trust and transparency that we want to bring to books, to authors and to readers, right? Get that community together. And we'll work together. Yeah. Paper and electronic. Yeah. And publishers I mean, and readers. Sounds good. So because uh, we can trust each other. So a question about your project. It's an amazing project. I mean, I think by mm. now everyone already realized how much I like it. Um, <laughs> how did you make it happen? Did you do your own ICO for the project, or uh, how did you go around okay. that? Uh, we did. Um, in uh, November last year, uh, the public project was crowdfunded where we uh, sold uh, uh, over half of the pebbles, the currency that I was talking about. So, um, and, and that was in what at the time I called ICO silly season. Uh, we didn't see that coming. Uh, we started the project uh, in April um, and uh, maybe even before. Uh, but when we saw that coming, we thought, well, 
I don't know if we want to be associated with all those things. And, you know, Joel and Travis talked about it too, but their criteria was, you know, they have interns and so on and they look for things that are real. And, and, um, and we said, you know, we are real. So let's just go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. So in November, um, we sold, uh, uh, the pebbles for, um, would have, would have been a hard cap of 1 million us, but we didn't, you couldn't buy it from America. You couldn't buy it with dollars, <laughs> right? You, you bought it with uh, ether or Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. Went makes sense. Quick. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So how was your experience with ICS? Because like, you know, it's to me personally, it was a roller coaster with all its implications. And I love roller coasters, but at the same time, I know it's not for everyone. And at the same time, it's not always the, the most enjoyable experience at the whole journey. So uh, how was your experience? How, how did your ICO go? And, um, you know, what did well, you I was really lucky to have great partners. And I would definitely recommend that. Mm -hmm. um, my co founders, Anton Saprico and Yuri Pimenov. Um, Anton's is the C COO, and he runs his own very successful company, Scandi Web. Um, and so operationally, he's got everything down and, and really knows how to get stuff done. So we could trust, you know, the program is going to happen, right? The artwork's going to get done and so on. And Yuri, our CTO, he translated um, Andreas Antonopoulos' Mastering Bitcoin. Um, and so he's uh, really someone that we can trust, you know, at that real data science you know, programming in solidity level. Uh, so that level of trust is what got me through, was that I knew that my partners had their side covered. And then this is my uh, sixth startup. I'm from Silicon Valley, um, career-wise. And so I, I sort of know so the you're, girl. So you're used to roller coasters, I guess. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. But because I've done it so many times before, I've learned a couple of lessons, uh, which is just tell the truth. Okay. It works. <laughs> it really works. Honesty is the best policy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I totally get that. Uh, okay. So, I mean, it sounds like there are loads of interesting, exciting things coming to the platform. There are loads of things that we could do both as authors and at the same time as readers as well. Um, so, um, publica.com is where you are and all the details are there. So I, I really encourage everyone to check it out for those who like me read loads of books. Um, that's where you should go. And for those who have written something and would like to have their book out there, um, for others to read definitely check it out as well because I always say that you know untold story is a broken dream and uh, if if you really have written something it's a shame to keep it in a drawer or in a computer it should see the world because definitely at least one person out there needs to read what you've written and if you want to talk to like-minded authors I know that Ani, I know that you came from a corporate background and and then uh, were drawn to the writer's life if you come to Publica, you'll find there a community of authors. And Suki Jutla um, is sort of our author's advisor and sort of the leader of that crowd. And she wrote Escape the Cubicle, which is what it sounds like. She works at a bank. She escaped the cubicle. And, uh, and she's a full-time uh, writer and entrepreneur now. And so you can talk to Suki about what it's really like. Yeah. I mean, I, I, once you escape the cubicle, it's almost no chance of going back there so <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> if you manage to escape once I, I don't think there will be a need to escape twice so yeah definitely uh well i mean okay. thank you so much for your time thanks for coming over i uh i definitely will need to sort of update people about the progress and about what i checked out and um, mm -hmm. yeah i mean i haven't been writing too extensively these days unfortunately because they're you know a blockchain and crypto projects i'm involved with full time so it's it's quite demanding this is all this is all going to be part of your next book trust me oh absolutely I, i'm making notes because i i realized that you know the things that 
that happen behind the ICOs and the things that happen behind the, you know, blockchain startups and the whole journey is uh, we see, it feels like people are covering just part of the story uh, because there are lots of things we, we, we prefer not to talk about. So eventually, mm-hmm. you know, when I find the right moment, uh, there is a lot to talk about. <laughs> well, if you're interested, if someone's watching you, and in, in this and in your podcast and reading your blog, they're sort of at that intersection of books and crypto. So on Publica's Telegram channel, that's who's there, right? Uh-huh. These are the these are the people that bought the pebbles. These are the people that care about books and they know about the the, the project and they support us all along. So go talk to them and get get comfortable with it. Awesome. I mean, be, because I'm involved in blockchain project full time, I'm. Uh, I'm on Telegram a lot of time at the same yeah. <laughs> time. So, so guess what I'm going to do right after our recording. I'm going <laughs> to jump on Telegram and check your community out because uh, there you go. it's always, uh, it, it's it's amazing to, to find and to talk to like minded people because yeah. I still, you know, I, I still believe that authors and writers are... Uh, specific people who whom only other authors and writers understand completely right. so uh it's uh and that's why we have two channels actually one is the main channel we also have an author's channel because you're right you know water cooler effect <laughs> yeah absolutely it's it's just you know there are things that you can't explain to someone who hasn't gone through yeah. the same thing so even if you write in a completely different genres like uh if I speak to, to a horror writer, we are still on the same page because we yeah. are in the same space and we, we really uh, went through through the same experiences, basically. So it doesn't really matter what you exactly write. Uh, what matters is, you know, the, you know, what tribe you belong to, basically. So, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So now there's uh, at least two podcasts that I know about. Yours, Ania Alexander, and Bad Crypto, Joel and Travis, that uh, that are hosted by authors, and I love that. Yeah, well, thank you. Thanks again for coming. So, publica.com, check it out, uh, and from there, uh, I'm, I'm sure you will get your way through the Telegram groups and uh, all the rest, so you will navigate from there and know where to go, what to do, how to get the books, how to publish them, and all that stuff. So thanks a lot, and it was really nice talking to you. And thank you, Ani. I really appreciate all that you do.